Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to another day in the life of a teacher vlog. So today is Tuesday, October 19th. And I swear I have tried to start this vlog like 500 times, but every time I try to start it, something happens, I get distracted and I just can't finish one. So anyway, I'm gonna try to finish a full vlog today, try to get some footage during class and share a little bit of footage that I got yesterday. If you guys did not know, um, or if you don't follow my Instagram, my home flooded about a month ago, um, September 17th, I think. So yeah, it was about a month ago. Um, our house flooded. You can get a little bit more of the story if you go to my family channel, um, which we don't post there very often. We're trying to do better at posting there. Um, I have another Disney vlog that goes up there. Um, but because of the house flooding, we are living in a hotel, which makes life a lot more difficult. And it also means that cash is back with me every morning. So as you can probably <laughs> um, guess, my days are a little bit stressful. But cash and I have found a way to help. Um, we found a way to cope with this. And, um, and I hate to admit, but technology really helps. <laughs> Um, so every morning we come here and Cash has the rats out on the table. Careful that they don't pee on your tablet. And he watches Bluey on his tablet. Today we brought his magnet tiles. They're these cute little Sesame Street magnet tiles. And he likes to build Mommy, little things out of them. So. Down here. Okay, let's wipe it off. Here, wipe it off. Thanks. Okay. And then I'm able to get a lot done. So it, it's been okay. Um, and we've been just getting here as close to 7.30 as possible so that I can get him to preschool as early as possible. So, um, are you okay? What happened? Did you hit your finger? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Let me just prop you guys up. See, so like now, as I'm trying to vlog, he's got Bluey on, so... I'm not going to be able to actually talk to you until Bluey turns off. Okay, so this week in science, we are learning about types of rocks. And types of rocks is not exactly a fourth grade, is not exactly a fourth grade standard. However, the standard that I am trying to teach is to identify evidence from patterns in rock formations and in fossils, in fossils and rock layers to support an explanation for the changes of landscape over time. That is the next generation standard. The Arizona standard is a little bit different. The Arizona standard is, this is where I fumble. Um, the Arizona standard is using various rock types, fossils, location, and landform to show evidence of earth surface changing over time. So it's additionally adding in um, types of rocks. So what I am doing this week is teaching types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, and the characteristics of each one. Next week, we'll start our Native American tribe unit, which will take us the entire quarter. And then after that, I will get into fossils and rock layers and how to look at the rock layers and fossil evidence. So I'm, I'm having to spread that standard out through a couple of weeks. Um, we'll also study the rock cycle because I think it's important for them to understand how rocks go undergo change. Um, but they will get that again in sixth grade. So I don't need to go into rock cycle too, too deep. Um, but I do know that a lot of the questions on our district assessment do cover rock cycles. So it's kind of silly that they assess the kids on a standard that isn't their level. So anyway, um, so that's what I've been working on. Um, we're taking our first set of doodle notes today. Yesterday, I had the kids working on um, just describing things, looking at characteristics of rocks. So we looked at a bunch of different rocks. We looked at the characteristics of them. We described them by color, um, texture, size, things like that. And then today, I will actually have them sort rocks. And I will show you guys what that looks like. So I give the kids this assignment. Normally I would use real rocks, but I don't have enough rocks for every pair or even group to sort them. So I just made it a digital um, assignment. Basically what they do is they take all of the rocks 
um, along the sides here and they create different groups with the rocks and then they're going to explain why they grouped them together. So they might group um, rock numbers eight, five, and six because they all have black in them. So they would put all those rocks in this group and then they would explain all of these rocks are black. Um, same thing with brown or texture. Whatever group they want to do, whatever um, sorting method they have, they can do that. And then on the last day of the unit, they do it again, but it's after I've taught them about types of rocks and their characteristics. So they'll actually group them by sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. And then um, today, so this is kind of what we did yesterday. We listened to, we did a see, think, wonder with these. I wanted them to see the different layers of rock and question why they're different colors um, because that's going to tie into our fossils and rock layers unit. And then we actually listened to Ricky the Rock That Couldn't Roll, which is a really cute story about a rock that's flat on one side that can't roll. And so his characteristics are a lot different from other rocks. And then after that, we actually talked about what characteristics are. We described Ricky the rock and the fact that he's flat helps us identify which rock he is in a picture. Um, and then we looked at this rock, we observed its color, texture, its size. I actually have an amethyst that I passed around so the kids could feel it. Um, same with this one, this is a piece of granite. So we just described the rock, we looked at its characteristics. We did this more of a whole group, um, like conversations, the kids talked in partners. Um, this one was a partner, this one was whole group. Um, this one was whole group and then today we're gonna start with so they've been warming up on boom cards if you guys don't know what boom cards is I will show you real quick I don't have the patience to actually make any myself but the pre-made decks of boom cards are really awesome like this one is the one we've been using this week and I have the kids warming up on boom cards every day and by the end of the week their score just keeps going up and up and up they get more and more correct so basically what they do is they can click on any of the different activities they can sort rocks they can so they do bumpy smooth things like that um yes what oh, she's on top of your backpack that silly girl and then um, we'll do our rock sorting activity we'll watch Dr. Binox do a quick video on types of rocks She'll come down. And then we will do some doodle notes. I always get these from Teachers Pay Teachers. I like these because they're a good way to get vocabulary and information down without just spewing it to kids. So then I have every space of those notes written down on a slide. Everything in red, they have to copy in their notes. Everything in white is basically like the title of their notes. And then I do like pictures, um, and so the doodle notes is gonna take quite a bit of time, probably today and tomorrow, um, but again, you can see that I've included lots of pictures, and then um, they will be doing probably Thursday, we're gonna make candy rocks out of Starburst candy, and I have um, pop rocks, so those kind of act as like minerals and crystals, and then they will do this activity as a an exit ticket. So um, they will this will all get cut out, and they actually have to um, they have to sort all of the different items under igneous, metamorphic, or sent sedimentary. So they have to put the correct. Um, rocks under there and then the descriptions. So that is how we're doing rocks. And now I'm exhausted. So I've got about 10 minutes until I can take cash downstairs. So I'm gonna get everything set up here for at least my homeroom class. And then I have bus duty this morning. So I will not be in my classroom until I pick up students. And then I do have reach groups, which are small math groups that I will pull. What is going on here? Hi, T. Oh, you guys are just peeing everywhere, huh? You just peeing everywhere. Hello. You guys just pee on everything. I always have to wipe this table down after they're done. We'll take this off so you guys don't pee all over it. Hey, these babies. Oh, the baby with thorns. Oh, the babies. Oh, the babies. Oh, the babies. Oh, my arm. Ouch. Teeny. Get down! 
Oh, are you sad you didn't get to come up? Oh my gosh, Tina. <laughs> These rats are something else. Okay, I'm gonna put them back because they're peeing everywhere. You guys just like to mark everything, don't you? Okay, go on. Tina, go inside the cage. You guys smell. You smell. You're stinky. You're stinky. You guys want some cereal? Here, Tina. Okay, go eat. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, so as a teacher, I feel that it's very important to reflect on the positive things and the not so great things that happen in every lesson. And the great part about being departmentalized is that I usually learn what mistakes I make during the first block and then by the third block, I've got it down, which sucks for the first block of kids, but they're always so, so sweet and they always are understanding and they figure it out and it's great. So something that I did this week that I don't usually do is I created a Google slideshow that had all of the notes that my students were supposed to include in their doodle notes. I had all of the words up on the screen. So this is a picture of our doodle notes right here. The kids fill in the blank as I talk. Um, and that is how they're able to record information. And then I have a slideshow that looks like this. So my idea was I was going to put like the title and then anything in red, they were supposed to copy in their notes. Well, what happened was, and I thought this was gonna be way more helpful because usually um, I put this under the camera, I write, um, but I thought this way I could include like more photos and that way the kids could have the slide pulled up on their Chromebook so that if they were taking too long writing, they could still have the slide previously. Anyway, you get my idea. What happened was, is as I was doing this, the kids were not sure where to put them in their notes. I thought I was pretty clear. Like this one said, characteristics of intrusive igneous rocks. I thought for sure they would know that characteristics is where they should put it, but they did not put that together. So what I decided to do was change it and add the section of the notes where it should go. But now that I'm reflecting more, I think what I'm going to do is take pictures of the notes themselves because I do have like a copy of them that are pre written on like this. So what I might actually do is just screenshot and crop this page and put it in the Google slide instead. That way they know exactly what to write and exactly where to put it. So even though I did this last week, I'm going to sit down right now during my prep and completely change it because it took so much time out of my lesson to try and flip back and forth and show them where they're supposed to be writing this information rather than them actually learning. And so I'm happy I can reflect on this. I'm happy that I figured it out before I did it to all three classes and wasted time. Luckily, we got through the whole thing today. I didn't really have time for closure or exit ticket though. So I'm gonna try to edit this real fast. I have about 40 minutes and hopefully the next group will have it correct, so. You learn every day and I apologize to the kids. Like every time I make mistakes like that or like I figure something doesn't work, I always tell the kids, I'm so sorry, I should have done this or I'm so sorry, I should have done that. And I think it's really important to show our students that we can make mistakes and we learn from them. It's a great modeling opportunity. So anyway, I'm gonna go fix that real quick and eat my lunch and then go get the children. All right, so this is what my house currently looks like. It doesn't look like they have done anything since the last time I've been here. And luckily,
I still have food in the fridge that probably should be thrown out. But the good news is, is nothing smells rotten. The floors are going to be very problematic because they glued the floors down. And I don't think they were supposed to do that. We've got everything out of here. It's this paint. So yeah, the whole house looks like this aside from like a couple of the walls, but majority of the walls look like this. So. Yeah, it's pretty wild. The rooms with carpet are totally concrete now. It's Cash's room. This will be my new office. I did decide, or actually, no, this will stay the guest room. And this will be my new office. Um, I am gonna move the playroom into where the office was or is um, so that the playroom can be a little bit bigger as the kids grow bigger. And by kids, I mean Cash and his buddies next door. <laughs> um, and then this is what this all looks like. I even thought about having them put a plug in here removing this and making this like a little closet office. So there would be like a little little desk in there with a computer and then like a chair that fits in there. Then you just open up the doors and you can sit in there. Um, and then, yeah, so the only room that didn't get damaged was our bathroom. So, but my plants got destroyed from the heat. So that's sad. And yeah, this is what our house is looking like. So the water came in through all of the bedrooms and seeped this way. And then if I get the right angle, like the floors don't look that bad from this angle, but if I get close enough, let's see, where's a good one? Like here, you can see how they're lifted. And it's especially bad in the kitchen. Obviously, this is what got the most. But when you walk on it, they're like wavy. And then the whole bottom baseboard layer got wet. So they had to fully dry all of the baseboards and the framing in the house um, before they could do anything else. So yeah, the this is the current office. And it's really big and it's like too big to be an office. Like it's kind of a waste of a room. So what we're gonna do is make this the playroom. So we'll keep the little couch in here and we'll put the TV and all of the toys and all of that in here with a rug. And then the kids can play in here. We're planning on doing a barn door, um, a nice big barn door or two, um, like one behind the other. So yeah, that is what our house is looking like right now. And it sucks because every time I walk in here, I hope that they've done more stuff and they haven't and it's frustrating, so. They're supposed to be starting on it this week, but it's almost Wednesday and they haven't done anything, so I don't have much hope. So yeah.